Thank you. Hi. Now let's pray. Father, we just thank you for the show today, and we just pray a blessing on everyone that's listening, and we give you all honor and the glory in Jesus' name. Today we're going to talk about actually fighting the good fight and staying away from things that we shouldn't. <laughs> Sometimes that's easier said than done. But the end, we have a tempter, the enemy, and we need to be aware of what he, his devices because you won't fool God. You may fool people, but you will not fool God. And not only that, there's consequences to what we do. And, and nobody is an island. We all affect everybody else around us. Isn't that right? Yeah. Well, so today we're going to talk about fighting the good fight of faith. Is it a fight? Yeah, it's a fight. Well, how is it a fight? It's a fight because we're tempted to do things probably that we shouldn't do. And maybe we're tempted to give up on things that we shouldn't give up on. And so uh, the thing is, when you're fighting the good fight of faith to do what's right and to stay strong in what you're believing in, stay in faith, you do have an enemy who will do everything he can to get you off of that. And so uh, then we need to stay strong. In fact, that's, we're going to put up the memory verse. Can you see that? Yeah. Um, <coughs> you know, it's, I don't know if you've ever done anything wrong. Oh, I think I heard that you, you raided a picnic and ate the cookies. Yeah, they were good. <laughs> you got in trouble, though, didn't you? Yeah, they chased me off. They wanted to shoot me. Yeah, I guess they probably did. But I guess being a pink skunk, they probably thought you're not your typical skunk, which is probably good. Well, let's go ahead and let's work on the memory verse here. And let's read it, okay? It says, but if you fail to do this, you will be sinning against the Lord. And you may be sure that your sin will find you out. Numbers 32, 23. Okay, you want to try that? Okay. But if you fail to do this, you will be sinning against the Lord. And you may be sure that your sin will find you out. Oh, look, he likes cookies too. Yeah, he likes cookies too. And that's found where? Up there. <laughs> no, where in the Bible? Numbers 32, 23. All right. Um, that's where it's found. And it's amazing. I don't know about you. It, it seems like, I, <laughs> you know, God's been working on me a long time. But I can't get by with anything and that's wrong. And I don't want to. But I can guarantee you I'll, I'll get found out. And it's just, um, it's a good thing. God takes care of me that he, he ke you know, I want to serve God. I don't want to do things that are wrong. And I think that's one of the problems is that none of us, when we love God, want to do things wrong. But sometimes we're, we, we kind of think that people understand and God will understand and we'll be okay. And it's, quite often it's not, you know, what we do to affect other people. Anyway, let's go ahead and put you back, and let's go ahead and talk about the PowerPoint, which is take a stand against sin, fight it. You know, you want to be blessed, you want to be used by miracles, and you want the power of God, and that's why we call power kids. Well, part of it is you need to do what's right. You cannot live a life where you're doing things in disobedience of God and expect to be used in the ways you'd probably like to be used and when, you know, someone once said to me, if you want God's results, you need to do things God's ways. And he is very clear on things that are right and things that are wrong. And the good thing about it is he forgives us. He's not like people sometimes that will hold a grudge. But at the same time, we need to live a life that's righteous, which means it's right before God. And, you know, when you don't, you leave yourself open to the enemy. Anyway. Let's go on and talk about the four things that we need to learn about God. And the first thing is, as we've said many times, God loves me. Oh, I'm so glad he loves me. Aren't you glad he loves you? Especially sometimes when we screw up. And sometimes we do. <laughs> so glad we can come to God and say we're sorry. And, you know, people sometimes they'll tear you off or they'll stay mad or whatever. But God doesn't. He forgives us. And he doesn't keep bringing it back up to us or reminding us either. When he forgives you and forgets it, it's like it never happened. Isn't that wonderful? And we need to be that way with each other, too. Secondly, after I have sinned, everybody needs to realize that we've all sinned. We all need a Savior. You know, Jesus came thousands of years after the Israelites were around. 
but they need a savior. Nobody could live righteous. Isn't that amazing? Everybody needed a savior. And Jesus died for me and for you. He was our savior. He was without sin. He went to that cross. He paid the price. He redeemed or bought us back so that we could have a wonderful life. And he gave us wonderful promises. That's why you need to read your Bible and get in it. And some of them just seem too good to be true. But they are true. Like the word says, my God shall supply all my need. You know, he really will. The, the Bible says, by his stripes I was healed. Healing's for you. You don't have to be sick. You don't have to be broke. You know, he says in his word, he'll always cause us to triumph. And that means we're going to win in every situation. That's good news. That's why they call it the good news. The fourth thing is, I must decide to live for him. That's a decision you have to make. You know, he did all these things for you, but he gives you a choice. He won't force you, and the enemy will try to talk you out of it. But I tell you what, he loves you, and he wants you to make that choice. But he didn't want to create robots. He wanted people who would choose him. And I'll tell you, never be sorry. At the end of this program, we'll show you how to, um, how to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior and be saved, as we call it, because there's a real heaven and a real hell. All right. We're going to go on. We're going to talk about the Bible story for this week. The ambush of Ai. This is when the Israelites um, had crossed over from the Red Sea and they were over in the promised land. And, you know, it's a funny thing is God gave them the promised land, but there were giants in the promised land. And there were big, beautiful grapes and all kinds of wonderful things there and beautiful, beautiful land. And God gave it to them, but they still had to fight the giants, and they still had to do what he said. And we're going to find out a very interesting story, because the scouts return with a, to the camp with a good report for Joshua, and that, this is based on Joshua 7 and 8. And they didn't really go before the Lord and find some things out. Um, you know, it's always before you do anything, it's always a good thing to talk to God. And not assume everything's going to be done the same way. And so they actually made the statement, hey, the armies of I is small. We can take the city and just take maybe two or 3,000 troops or whatever, and we can wipe them out. And so <laughs> they only took 3,000 men to I, but at the gates, would you believe that the, at the gates of I, the army, their army ran over them? I think they only killed like 36 people. Um, and, and they're saying, these are the brave people who took over Jericho? And it says, look at them run. They're afraid to fight. So um, the frightened Israelites returned from their defeat to, uh, at Ai, and Joshua and the whole camp were stunned. It was like, what happened? So now they decide they're going to go talk to God, which, you know, <laughs> they probably should have done before they went to find out everything was all right. And so... Um, <coughs> The soldiers can't explain why they were so afraid. So Joshua seeks help from God. God, why did this happen? Now our enemies will destroy us. Now they know that we can be defeated. And God tells Joshua that the people are being punished because someone disobeyed him when they took Jericho. And basically, they took things that were to be set aside for the Lord, and they took things they shouldn't have. And... Like I say, our memory verse said, your sin will find you out. And, and like I say, <coughs> you can fool some of the people some of the time and all the people some of the time, but you'll never fool God any of the time. And so uh, here's what was said. Early the next morning, Joshua calls the leaders of the tribes to him and he said, someone stole Somebody disobeyed. I came up with a second picture. I wonder why that did that. Anyway, let me try that again here. There, <laughs> that's better. For some reason, it didn't come all the way on that. So somebody disobeyed God's order and kept part of the spoils of Jericho. This man must be punished or we will die at the hands of the enemy. And so uh, it's not okay to disobey God. And, you know, sometimes God will allow people to do that for a period of time, hoping they'll repent. But sooner or later, your sin's going to find you out. And especially if you set yourself aside to really serve God, God will train you. And I think sometimes God has a sense of humor and 
things you could get by with, all of a sudden you can't because you said you wanted a closer walk with God. Um, God points out Achan as a guilty one because he started bringing them in. They said, well, it's in, you know, it's in the tribe of Judah. And then it came down to the family of Zimri. And then it came down to Achan. And finally, Achan said, yes, I've sinned. I took a Babylonian garment and, and some, um, a pound of gold or whatever and some silver and um, said that he hid them in everything. Uh, <coughs> so they repented and those people were punished. They actually were stoned and burned. <laughs> but then, so now with God's support, Joshua leads the soldiers against Ai. Joshua raises his spear to give the signal the Israelites and they rush in they set fire to the city and the soldiers of I are caught in a trap and are quickly defeated so God did cause them to defeat I but we need to do things God's way and we need to pray before we go off and just assume um, that it's going to be a certain way because God may have a different set of plans and so it's real important for us to find out from God what he wants to do in every situation you say, well, people think it's weird if you talk to God. I think it's weird if you don't. <laughs> Honestly, you read through the Bible, and I started highlighting all the passages where it said, and God spoke to Moses, or God said this, and it's all through the Bible. God talks. He's always talking, and he wants to talk to you, and he wants to tell you things. He doesn't want you to go make mistakes because there's a scripture that says, with lack of knowledge, my people perish, and it's not a good thing. Okay. Um, <clears throat> got this little girl here and she's riding a bicycle she's kind of cute but what if you saw a big old car I suppose she was a real person you saw a big old car coming and it was headed straight for her would you say well I don't, I don't want to bother her or would you say well it's really none of my business wouldn't you tell her hey you know what there's a car coming you need to get out of the way and yet when it comes to sin, lots of times we don't want to say anything. When we see people doing things that are not right and not good, you say, well, they, they, it'll make me unpopular. Well, it might, but it might save a life. And we, sometimes we need to speak up. There's a time when we need to say something. I talk to people all the time because I'm a pastor, and they don't understand why things are happening in their life, and sometimes they don't want to hear it. But the truth is, when you hear their story, you can usually know why or what happened. Not always. The enemy could just be attacking people. But sometimes we've opened a door, as we call it, for the devil to come in and do things. And he's always looking for a way. You know, it's kind of like uh, people who have problems, um, you know, problems with school. And they stay up and play video games half the night. And then they wonder why they're too tired to take the tests and they do lousy. Well, they should have gone to bed earlier. They kind of did that to themselves. And, and you know, there's, there's a lot of things. There's things that happen that aren't our fault. But there are things that are. But make the adjustment. Because God wants us to triumph in every situation. He doesn't want the enemy to get a foothold in. Someone once said the devil was a very rude guest. You know, you give him an inch, he takes your whole arm. So, let's go on now. And, let's see, I'm going to bring out Egbert. Let's see. Hello, Mr. Egbert. Ah, oh, how are you? Ah, oh. well, it's good to have you here. Yeah, I got out of prison. What do you mean you got out of prison? I was in the trunk. Yeah, you were in the trunk. Well, look at this. It's a boxing ring. You're looking at me with that really blank stare. Yeah, I don't know about boxing. Well, do you know about this? Oh, I know about that. I'm a rooster. Oh, yeah. They're circling each other. Yeah, it's, they're, they're going to have a, a fight. Two roosters look like fighting birds, and that's not cool. They will really fight. Do you ever fight? Oh, sometimes. <laughs> One of the things you notice, like with uh, when they do that, they walk around. What are they doing? Staring at each other? Yeah, they're staring at each other because they're sizing each other up. They're sizing each other up and looking for a weakness. You know, that's what the enemy does. He goes out around like a roaring lion looking for who he may devour. And so they try to size each other up. The enemy does too because he wants to tempt you. And it's uh, pretty much uh, the same thing. And I don't suppose you get in many fights, right? 
No. Is it because you probably don't have those big talons, do you? No, I don't fight that much. Well, you see that bird has a talon. And the enemy, when he tempts you and does things, there's things that he has hidden away that he wants to harm you with. And just like, just like the roosters, when they actually do that illegal fighting, they actually put extra things on them so they make sure and hurt each other. But the good news is we've overcome everything. And I don't care what the enemy puts against you. God has given you way because he tells us, he always causes us to triumph in Christ Jesus. And he makes us more than overcomers because our enemy is already defeated. But if you give place to him, then you could find yourself in a situation that would not be good. Okay, it's time for you to go back down here now. And so, uh, hence the picture. <laughs> um, you know, I, what are some things, just like those birds circling each other, sizing each other up, there's demons that size you up. But you have great big angels, angels that are very tall and very powerful. But you know what? They respond to the word, the word of God. So when you're in a situation like Jesus, when he was tempted in the wilderness, what did he do? He spoke the word. And because he spoke the word, he said, it is written. That's our best defense because that's like a two-edged sword and it will go through. And if you want to defeat in the spirit realm, you, you use the word of God and it's very, very powerful. The word of God creates things. It's, it's alive. And so it's really wonderful. And in a, in a moment here, we're going to start with our story. And there again, I think everybody wants to, to have a successful, wonderful life. But do things God's way. He has a wonderful plan for your life. And because he has a wonderful plan for your life, um, the thing that we need to do is we need to seek us just like the people in I. They, they didn't bother. Uh, not the, um, the Israelites did not go before God before they went after the people of I. They thought, oh, they looked at them and said, they're not real big. We can handle it. You need to go find out from God. Each step that you're doing, each day, go spend time with God. Find out if there's something about this day you need to know about. Find out if there's something different. Or find out if God's got something else for you or something for you to do. It will be worth it. All right, we're going to go on with this story. Once again, we have the JC Fan Club. And this time they're going on a camping trip. Fans go on a camping trip. That's interesting because I don't lose any electricity. But we're going to use the word pretend that... They're kind of like little people. Anyway, they're excited. They're going on this trip, and they're going up into the mountains, and they think it's really pretty cool. So here they are, and they put the boys on one side and the girls on the other. That's what we used to do when we did sidewalk Sunday school. The boys would sit on one side, and the girls would sit on the other. And We'd always have a competition between the boys and the girls and who, who was better looking and who did better. Anyway, um, so here they were. They had put their tents up, and, of course, the pinky ones are kind of for the girls, the blue for the boy. And they got it all set up. And then their counselor said, okay, we need to have a meeting. And so he did that. He called them in. And he says, here's the rules. No stealing. No fooling around. No plug pulling. No fighting. And, of course, um, they, you know, he wanted to make sure that nothing happened. Because he knows when you get a bunch of kids together, and, or fans in this case, things tend to happen. So he wanted to make sure ahead of time that they wouldn't have any problems. Well, that's Stan the fan over there. And he sees uh, the counselor on a, on a cell phone. He didn't have a cell phone. And he thinks it's pretty cool. He wants a cell phone. So he kind of watched where the counselor went. And he was determined he was going to have that. He was going to steal it. He was a kid, or a fan, I guess you could say, that was in a lot of trouble. He was always in trouble. Well, guess what? In the evening, he went. He, he saw just where the counselor put it. Went and got that fan. And he took it. And so the counselor didn't know where it was. But he didn't say anything because he was busy doing things all through the, um, you know, the camp setting up. And it's, it started to rain. But before that, 
they had taken the fan and all the different ones had, uh, nobody said anything to him about it being wrong. Nobody said, Stan, you shouldn't have taken that. That's the counselors because they didn't want to be unpopular. In fact, a lot of them made, uh, made all kinds of phone calls on the phone. And so they were kind of part of it. That's not cool. Well, it started to rain and it rained a lot. And in fact, it rained and it rained and it rained. And so the counselor then went looking for his phone and couldn't find it. So finally he called them all out together and said, look, this is a dangerous rain situation and flooding and we are in danger. I need to have my phone back. And of course, uh, they're all kind of acting like they don't know anything, but if you notice, they're all kind of looking at Stan. And so finally, Stan admitted that he had taken the phone. So he said, well, show me where it is. Let's go get it. So he had actually hidden it under his tent. The only problem was it was now muddy and rainy, and the water destroyed the, back, the, the battery pack. And, of course, they were in trouble. They were way up on a mountain. Nobody knew they were there. And the flood was the waters were rising. And those of us who live in the Houston area can tell you they can rise really fast. So here they were. I mean, they could die. And, and the counselor told them that. Because the battery was dead. They were a long way away. And the water was rising. So... He said to them finally, the only thing we can do is we need to try to go up to higher ground. There's, uh, there's a fort up there and we'll have to leave everything. So that's what they did. They all struggled up the mountain. They had to leave the things they had which got flooded and destroyed. And they finally made it to safety but in the process some of their blades got broken. All because somebody had stolen or done something. You know, we affect each other. When somebody does something wrong, it affects all of us. And it's not to scare anybody or make anybody feel bad, but it's real important to do things right. And, you know, um, especially if you want to be used to God. God has told us to do certain things because he doesn't want to ruin our fun. He wants us to have a lot of fun. But he wants us to have it the right way. And he wants it to have a good end. And the truth of the matter is, if you're doing things wrong... There, and God has told you not to do something, there's a reason. There's a reason. And it could even affect someone's life, like in this case. Well, we're going to go now, and we're going to, if you've never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, this is your chance. And we invite you to do so. I'm going to put up some slides that are in Spanish. And it's a little different from what I'll be saying, but it's uh, if you're sitting there with people who don't know English, they can accept the Lord. And I tell you what, getting to know the Lord is wonderful. And he can be your best friend. He's God. You've got to respect him and honor him and love him and do what he says. You know, some people get kind of casual when it comes to God. It's like, oh, he's daddy God. And that's good. But respect him. He's God. And when he tells you to do something, take him seriously. You know, you can get real comfortable with people to the point where or friends that you don't take him seriously, but take God seriously. And when he tells you to do things, because he is God. Yes, he loves you. He has a wonderful plan for your life, but we need to obey him. And one of the things we need to do is we need to accept him as our Lord and Savior. The Bible says in Romans 3, it talks about this, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life and that for all of sin and come short of the glory of God. It says between Romans 3 and Romans 6. And, and you know what? Everyone needed a Savior. There's no shame in that. And the fact is, everyone needed a Savior. And he died for us so that we could have all those benefits. So there's no shame in admitting you need Jesus. In fact, it's more shameful if you don't. Because there is a real heaven and there is a real hell. And you do not want to go to hell. You want to go to heaven when you leave this earth. And you know, we, it says our, our lives are like a fleeting vapor. We're not here that long. I mean, you kids, you think, wow, you know, I got my whole life ahead of me. Well, we don't know how long we have. 
Jesus coming back soon? We don't know. But I know this. We ha will have an eternity somewhere. And you want it to be with Jesus. The Bible also says in Romans 10, 13, Whosoever calls on the name of the Lord can be saved. You're a whosoever, right? Of course you are. And the Bible says in Romans 10, 9 and 10, that if we'll believe in our heart and say with our mouth that God raised Jesus from the dead, we can be saved. So if you want to do that, we'll do this now. Um, just say this prayer with me. And we'll do this. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for sending Jesus to die for me. Jesus, I do believe God raised you from the dead. I believe it with my heart, and I'm saying it with my mouth. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. I know you'll never leave me or forsake me. I thank you all my sins are forgiven. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Once you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, then you need to get in a good church. And you say, well, I don't know any churches. Well, ask around, especially ones, since you're a kid, have good kids, children's programs, and especially ones that talk about the power of God and, and, and preach the Bible, the Word of God, and get yourself a Bible. And you, know, you might want to get one of the easier translations. Of, I mean, I like the King James, but it is Old English. And there are some new ones. There's the Passion Bible. There's a Living Translation. There's different ones. And begin to read it and talk to God. You know, don't, when you talk to God, the Bible says, be still and know I'm God. So get to a place where you're alone with him and just let him talk to you and you listen. It's the hardest thing sometimes for a kid to be still, but it's worth it. And he can save you so much um, by telling you things that'll make your life better. Well, we're out of time, so we say be blessed and thank you for tuning in and we love you.